Minister of Arts and Culture, Minister Natim Tetwa, and also Laurent Vallet from the French National Audiovisual Institute, uh, talking more. Uh, about the Rivonia trial digitized tape in just a while. But still coming on the show uh, later on, we'll also be talking to Stone Siad. There is an initiative, an annual initiative taking place from here in Gauteng to the Northwest province, whereby they are on their banks, uh, bikes, I beg your pardon, to raise money for uh, uh, the schools as well as the ECDs in certain areas of the Northwest province. So um, just make sure that you stay with us for that and more. But for now, uh, let us just go to Lien as he's talking to the Minister of Arts and Culture, Natim Tetra. It's over to Lien. I have a phone number in my possession, a phone, a phone number in my possession, which was given to me. Yes. You. It is 2414. All right now, between 1963 and 1964, 10 leaders of the ANC were tried in the Ravonia trial that has been described as the trial that changed South Africa. You heard in a clip there that was from the original trial. Uh, the over 591 original Ravonia trial Dictabelt audio files were sent to France in 2014 for digitization. And today, the French National Audiovisual Institute will be handing over the tapes to the South African Ministry of Arts and Culture. To talk more about the Ravonia trial digitized tapes, we're joined in studio by our minister, Natiam Tetwa of Arts and Culture. Minister, always a pleasure to see you. Welcome. Thank you, Lian, and to the viewers. And joining the minister is <coughs> Laurent Vallet from the French National Audiovisual Institute. Good to have you. Good Welcome. Morning. Thank you. Um, minister, uh, let's, let's begin uh, with you. W why is today's handover so significant? What is, what is so momentous about this occasion? Well, it's historic. Uh, it's about uh, ourselves as South Africa, about uh, the path we've traversed to 1994, um, for the first time, South Africans uh, later this year are going to be able to listen and follow the proceedings of the Rivonia trial from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. You would uh, recall, uh, Liana, that currently people only know the clip of Madiba yes. when he, uh, you know, uh, rounding up his case and so on. But the entire proceedings, cross-examinations and everything, people are going to follow it through and, and to know. And that for us is important because this is who we are and we have to preserve this for posterity, for people who would be uh, researching in future and so on, but also for the remaining trialists who would be part of the handover uh, with me today uh, together with uh, our friends from uh, France. And yeah. I must say that uh, this, this, these are the fruits of our cultural diplomacy with France. We have what we call seasons, uh, which we started in 2012 with them, uh, and we have seasons with other countries as well, which are more about relations between different countries. Yeah, I mean, it's, you're so right, because it's that, that one mm. line, I am prepared to die for. I mean, that is, that is the epitome mm. of, the, of the tapes of the Verona trial, but the fact that we are now going to hear everything, the whole entire trial, um, this, is, this is an incredible moment. But why France? Why, why, why was it done in France? Is, it, is there sort of machinery or technology that you have that perhaps we, we weren't able to do? Well, yeah, as the minister said, this is the fruit of a, a long cooperation and uh, the fruit of the, the, the diplomatic relationship between France and South Africa. And the project was born at the end of the, the cross-cultural seasons. Yes, uh, Institut National de l'Audiovisuel, National Institute of Audiovisual, uh, has a special technology, a long time experience in uh, preserving and digitizing all kind of audiovisual support. And this is this technology that we propose to our friends from South Africa to um, apply to this collection of dictabelts. And this is probably because we were known for this. Uh, for this specific technology that we used also for our friends in Cuba, for instance, or in uh, Oriental Timor, that we've been chosen by, by, uh, by the, the authorities of South Africa to, to undertake this very important work from a historical point of view for South Africa, but yeah. for the world, for the world uh, 
It's satisfactory. How, how long is it? How, how long is the, the, the actual oh, full recording? It, it's, it's more than, you have a, a little bit less than 600 dictabanks, 591, and it represents something like 230 hours of, of sounds, of voices, of silences, of all the 12 uh, trialists, the prosecutor, the lawyers. Mm. This is something really incredible. And the whole collection uh, digitized will be hand over to the minister yeah. this afternoon. Minister, what, what, what are we going to do with these, what, with these digitized tapes now? Well, but just before, uh, Leanne, let me say that uh, we, we started, we spoke to a, a lot of people who have been interacting with different countries about this technology. And we ended up in France because we couldn't get uh, the kind of technology. We, we, we have to preserve them. We have to preserve them, but we also have to make them available for the public uh, because this is their yes. story. Yes. Uh, they have to know their story. They have to know their roots, where they come from, and so on. And especially coming at this time during the Human Rights Month um, and the actual leaders who were, who were arrested were fighting for human rights. Mm. Uh, and therefore, it would be important that uh, uh, our people have this uh, and, and interact with it and do whatever they want to do because this is the essence of, of who we are. The Rivonia trial changed everything in terms of the uh, uh, political landscape in our country. Uh, it was the key trial which led us to uh, 1994, obviously taking a, a, a lot of... Uh, uh, time to reach 1994, but it was the turning point for us. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, these tapes, you say they're going to be available to the public as well. Um, schools, will we be, how? How will they be able to, <coughs> to listen to them? Well, uh, the, the, as, as uh, 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 Valéa said, this is uh, from the old technology, uh, which is obsolete now, uh, which is dicta belts. Yeah. It's, uh, transfer, it's digitized. So uh, people are going to access it through our own National Archives uh, uh, Center, which is uh, in a form of digitized uh, 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 trial. Uh, so not only people in South Africa, but everywhere. Yeah. people will be able to uh, access it. Lauren, just before we, we, we close up, I mean, there were about 600 recordings um, involved in all of this. It, it, it must have been, uh, firstly, how long did it take you? And, and, and I mean, was it a difficult process or, or quite straightforward? Well, it was, uh, of course, it was uh, not an easy process, but we had uh, the opportunity to, to have a collaboration with uh, a very, uh, an incredible um, researcher in the, in, the, in the laboratory in the Lyon University in France called Henri Chamou, who has built a, a machine which is able to read the dictabags and to digitize the dictabags. So based on this technology and this cooperation between INA and uh, Lyon University, we were able to take care of these 600. And there are many more left. And this is maybe what I would like to say is that part of the uh, ceremony of this afternoon is also the signing of a training agreement. Because right. now what mm -hmm. we want to do is to, to transfer, transfer technology, is to, to transfer skills, yes. is to build capacity. And uh, uh, our friends in the National uh, Archives of South Africa will now be able, after these training sessions, four of them, first in France, three other sessions in South Africa, will be able to continue and digitize themselves the remaining dictabags, because they are estimated to more than uh, 50,000 mm -hmm. remaining dictabags, wow. including the, the, the dictabags of the, the treason trial, trial recordings mm -hmm. in, in uh, and there are many collections also held by the nine South African provinces. Mm -hmm. So I think there is still many work to be done, and it, it will be done now through the directly by the South African Archive, thanks to this training agreement we will sign this afternoon. Fantastic. Well, that's great news to come out of it, so we can uh, perhaps do so many, because, I mean, there are a lot more that we'd like to. 50,000, you're yes, saying. Yes, absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah. Good luck with the handover today. Thank um, you. I'm sure Thank it's going to be a very much. momentous occasion. Uh, taking place at?
Where is it happening? Uh, at, the, at the court in Pretoria. In, okay. in Pretoria. So it's going to be yeah. very Fantastic. Moving. Lovely. Yeah. Look, looking, looking forward to seeing how that all pans out. Thanks for joining us. Of course, our minister here in South Africa of Arts and Culture, Natiem Tetra, and Laurent Vallet, who is uh, from the French National Audiovisual Institute. Yes. Uh, of course, France were uh, the ones responsible for digitizing the Ravonia trial. We're handing them over, and now we're going to be able to, to listen to the entire trial, everything that went down there in uh, those 1960s trials, which is uh, a huge part of our history. All right.